another transistor radio kit I've had hanging around for a while. It's one of these uh, red radios, red medium wave super heads. Um, this one has an extra transistor, I think, but all that's used is a diode, so it's still got two IF stages, a converter, and uh, basically uh, three transistors in the audio stage, a driver, and two output. I uh, wonder how this one will go together. Oh, it's got a carrying strap, how nice. I suppose the other useful thing I've managed to do as well is uh, use Google Translate to uh, work out the colours of the cores. So they match the diagram, uh, red B2, that's the oscillator, and yellow, that's an IF, white, that's an IF, and black is the detector. Most things seem to work with those sort of colours that are AM, so... <clears throat> the diagram I've got does actually show the oscillator positions, but I guess if I looked at Google to translate, they would probably tell me the number there, possibly. Well, I was just wondering which transformer was which, but it's quite easy to tell because the output transformer B7 has got a very low resistance compared to the driver transformer, so it's not uh, hard to tell which is which. So the output transformer is the yellow one, B7. Well, it's coming along nicely. I've linked out some of the uh, links apart from the one on the output stage. I was just looking at the blue radio I've got. This one. Um, it's only got one IS stage if I remember rightly. Yeah. Yeah, I can only see the white transformer there, IF transformer. So I assume it's only got one IS stage. Do you know, I can't remember. I built this quite a while ago. Well, looking good. Oh, any comments or anything? Um, yeah, the direction's fairly clear. Um, I've left the bias open there, uh, so I can check what's going through the output stage. Uh, fairly easy build. I noticed that um, in the instructions it, it goes towards a G and an H on the RF transistor, so one's got a lower gain for the converter but I've just got all H versions of that transistor. I also noticed this one has got a couple of diodes used as a shunt regulator, so the RF stages all run off a, a shunt, because there's a couple of diodes, that's probably about 1.4 volts, so that's interesting to note as well. A couple of adjustments on the capacitor, I'll have to figure out which one's oscillator. I think it's fairly easy to work out, because that's the ferret rod, so. Only problem I found with my kit is, um, Unfortunately, it's broken on this battery bit here, um, so it might not be able to support a battery without pinging out. Might be able to melt that together or glue it or something, but uh, yeah, it's uh, quite a nice little compact radio, I must admit. And uh, I've got a couple more, and I was going to do some experiments to, with them. You know, you get a nice bit, of, you get some nice parts as well, perhaps for amateur radio building. If you want to build a TRF receiver for amateur radio, that's what I'm sort of thinking. Well, I noticed some ledges here and I've managed to get the circuit board to sit in those. I had to cut the um, earth tag on this uh, um, oscillator coil because it was scraping the uh, tuning knob, so i uh, fixed that now. I guess the circuit board pushing against here is going to help hold that bit in that's uh, broken. But uh, yeah, so that might help that little problem. Just checking the uh, regulated voltage and get a good connection. 139, that sounds right for a couple of diodes, doesn't it? Should see a volt drop across that. Yep, let's see if I can get the current range to work. That's assuming that the fuse isn't blown or something, um, which would be uh, possible. Just trying to find the current range. <laughs> Helps you put the meter lead in the right place. Oh, about 6 milliamp and I had a hum there when I touched the volume control, so that's good. Don't suppose for a minute it's going to receive anything to it's set up, but no. It would help if I put that back, wouldn't it? That's pretty dead, unfortunately. 
That's better. Not hearing anything. Hmm, that's a shame. Anyway, at least the uh, bias looks about right. Just having a look at some collector and emitter voltages. Right, this is the first IF. Yep, got some voltage there. Uh, no, sorry, converter. Yep, got collector voltage. First IF. No collector voltage. What's the betting that I haven't properly soldered one of the links? Um, V3, second IF. Yep. Better have it soldered the link properly. Interesting. Okay, good. So it's now working. It does help if you've got a collector voltage on the uh, first IF, so that's good. Now alignment. I'm capacitively coupling in 465 kilohertz near the ferret rod and I'm just going to trim these up for maximum smoke from the, the uh, speaker. off as I go. Right, that's the IF done then. Next I'm going to do 600 kilohertz and I'm going to line the red oscillator core and adjust the ferret rod at 600. I'm going to use this but put it further away than it is now. Now I'm going to adjust the trimmers at the top end. I'm on 1.3 meg or 1300. This one appears to be the local oscillator. And peak the RF tuning. Repeat again at 600. I thought I might have to do it again and then I'll have to do it back up at the top again. Well I've put a drop of glue on the speaker and on the ferret rod to stop that moving around. Now I've got the coil right. Yeah it was a good idea to go back to 600 and set it up again and then recheck at the top end at 1300. I'm um, not quite sure how this is going to go because there's only one hole here to put this through so that's a bit of a puzzlement. I always thought you loop these through two holes but um, never mind. Anyway, nearly there. Just having a look at the converter stage on the uh, pocket radio, the red one. Um, a lot of these pocket radios they use a single transistor as the converter, mixer and RF preamp got the ferret rod here, we've got the tuning capacitor across it so we can resonate it at a certain frequency. We've also got the trimming capacitor for the high end so that's for the tracking. There is a lower impedance tap so it is acting like a transform because transistors have a low input impedance, they're a current device so you tend to have a tap to get the RF from the ferret rod and it makes sure that the uh, tuned circuit has got a better Q if you're not loading it down so much. So this transistor does many many things, it does three things. So the input, the RF signal is amplified by the base of this transistor, it's fed into it, you can see it's biased. But also you've got the oscillator coil and you can see it's in the collector and also tapped into the emitter. So actually that forms an oscillator by having the um, two out of phase. You notice we've got the tuning capacitor again across here so that ensures as we tune along there's a frequency generated by the oscillator which hopefully will track 
the IF above it, which is 465 in this case. Also, you'll notice in the collector is the IF transformer. So that's the first IF. So basically, the transistor is amplifying the incoming RF. It's being an oscillator from this oscillator coil. And it's also mixing those two signals together to produce an IF signal. So it, uh, it's a busy old transistor, this one. So it's quite critical that it's working correctly. Um, it always amazes me how somehow they managed to get these two to track fairly accurately because they usually use the same capacitor, but they use different inductors. So I set, I, in my setup, I set this at 600 kilohertz and adjusted the ferret rod on its core at 600 kilohertz. And then at 1300 I adjusted this trimmer and this trimmer here. And they do seem to track quite well. You know, the Q of this is not terribly high. So um, you've got a little bit of leeway if it mistracks. But if it mistracks too much, you're going to have very poor sensitivity. So that's basically what the converter does in the red radio. Yeah. Quite sensitive, I'd say. But then it has got two IS stages, so I'd expect it to work quite well. It's certainly pulling in Caroline there. Um, not sure about the sound quality, but what do you expect for a pocket radio? And so to the next gift I got. So it's one of these. Let's see what this one's like. Uh, this looks fun. The box itself is the radio. <coughs> It looks like everything is already soldered for me. Oh, there's this little breadboard in there. That's uh, kind of interesting. Well, this one comes with an FM module. What is it? A 9088. Oh, that seems familiar. <laughs> That's what we were just playing with. <clears throat> in the white radio, there's audio amp and some, some resistors and things. I notice in the books you can put little projects together and build up gradually, which is educational, which I like. Um, just make a click in the loudspeaker and gradually build the amplifier up. Um, nice little board. I guess that's what you finally build the amp up. But I guess there's nothing stopping you from using Vero board if you wanted in the finish. Just having a look at the FM board. I see that the inductors are uh, pre-made on the board. And also there's a, a Variac diode the looks of it. <coughs> various little projects as you go along like an oscillator mm -hmm. interesting <laughs> this chips also implemented a scan system problem with it keep picking up rubbish on my bench so it keeps getting stuck but I obviously don't want it to sit on music for any length of time because we'll have problems but anyway at least something's happening A little interesting little kit really um, solderless um, I like the manual they've even provided the circuit diagram of the FM tuner um, experiments with aerials um, AGC range by changing resistors and the tuning range etc so yeah it's a an interesting little kit. I don't think I've ever built a cardboard radio before. Of course, the uh, deck with the connections in takes me back to when I um, used to have a book, or I still got it, I think, called Adventures in Electronics. You used a similar board and you built circuits on it. And then there was a follow up one, uh, Adventures of Microelectronics. Now, I wonder if it's Tom Duncan who wrote that, if I remember rightly, if my memory's good. So, yeah, interesting little kit. Um, I see it's of German origin, which is probably why it has got good technical information in it. So that's very, very good. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of fun. Other suggestions they make, like put a bigger loudspeaker on, etc. 
So yeah, I'd say it's a, an interesting little thing. I guess you could take all the components off and shove them on a Vero board, um, and then you can use the deck for some of your experiments if you wanted. So that's a, another one that was a nice gift.